Hey, my name is Jonathan, also known as the Mad Maker, also known as the producer of the Mercs of Mischief channel. Today, I'm gonna give you five design tips to make sure that your Hero Forge minis are easy to support and print. Roll the intro. This video is sponsored by Hero Forge. It's an easy to use design tool that lets you build the perfect miniature online using a fully 3D in-depth character creator that works right in your web browser and it even works on most phones. That's how smooth this dragon flies. You can order them in a variety of materials, including plastic and metal options. But if you're watching this video, you're probably much more interested in the downloadable STL file that you're gonna use to print on your 3D printer at home. And all this month, May 2020, they are doing Mini May. That means two things. One, each week they're giving away a free STL file. There's still a couple more of those you can grab and it's already there in your digital downloads page on your Hero Forge account. The other thing is a discount on all STL files until May 31st, 2020, if you use the code STAYHOMEANDPRINT at checkout. So if you've been thinking about designing all those party members and getting them to print up at home, now is the time. If you're watching this in the future, hopefully I will have cut this part out. Here we have a mini that was designed by the Hero Forge designers, one of their free downloads for Miniature May. And what's interesting, is because I didn't really consult with them at all. This video is sponsored by Hero Forge, but aside from the basic topic, uh, I don't really tell them what I'm doing before I make these things and put them out. And we can see that they followed all of my rules. They centralized most of the details around here uh, onto one side. They didn't load all of the slots. You know, they got something in each hand, but they didn't put anything on the, the base. They didn't put anything on this side. They've got a cape, but not a bunch of other items uh, back there. So, you know, so far, looks like they uh, I'm, I'm on the same page as, as them, which is kind of, you know, reassuring. We're mostly building in a consistent direction up, I would say, towards the uh, up and to the right. And we do have a good plate side with enough distance between the cape and the back here. So if we tip them back this way, we can attach some supports both to the big flat surface of the cape and the big flat surface of his behind sides. And again, they don't have these big layers running against each other. They've got the cape sort of floating away. Uh, the sword over here has got some distance from the, the body. So everything is kind of its own thing. So in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to build a character that I got to play in-game. Darius McLaren, son of Darren McLaren, the handsome barbarian who became a baron. Darren the McLaren, the barbarian who became a baron. Darian I'm who so proud of this one. I no. remember Darren McLaren, the barbarian, who, before he became a baron, he used of to course. have a trouble with swearing. Is this small kingdom of... Uh, out east. <laughs> That's officially what his town's name is. Yeah, it's old Orcish. It's it's actually pronounced in yeah, in yeah, in yeah, in yeah. Yeah, the tonality is important to the Orcish language. In yeah. Do you have a background speaking Orcish? This is the rest of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> and that goes on for a while in that game. Darren McLaren is a half orc, but he is a tech bro half orc. So the first things I'm gonna do is, you know, get the hair, face, body, how I want them. <laughs> Upper scale. <gasps> what? 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 Oh my God, this is new. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, yes. Whew. Okay, calm down. We usually like to give him a bedonk, but we'll say he has a real flat butt. I feel like that fits. So now we can come up to the first tip, and that is to centralize your details. Centralize details into one general area. And what I mean by this is that you want to avoid having a lot of different items and clothing with a lot of texture to them spread out all over the model. Now, this is something that you wanna think about right from the start when you're doing your clothes. Is this character gonna be holding something important in their hands? Where's a lot of the detail gonna be, be focused? I wanna have him in the act of artificing something. So he's probably gonna be holding something out in front of him. So I wanna make sure that I can keep most of my detail sort of in the kind of upper body and more to one side uh, if I can. But consequently, I know that my legs, I'm probably gonna go with something real simple. You know, we 
go to the feet. I don't think he really cares that much, unless, I'll say he's a sneakerhead. Um, actually knowing him, they're probably uh, branded after his, his favorite uh, EDM DJ. That's Eldritch Dance Music. And then on the chest, I'll just, you know, I just kind of wear a, a dress shirt um, when I play him. So we'll do it that way. So see, I would run into problems here if I wanted to go with something more complicated in the legs. Then I've got more potential overhangs depending on which way I orient him. And especially because I'm kind of focusing on what's gonna be going on with the hands, I don't wanna to get too much in that situation. Same thing with shoes even, if I were to go with say the furry boots, got a fair amount of detail down here that I have to take special care of. I, you know, I'd rather just not think about any of that stuff. Chest pieces, again, same thing. You know, this puts a bunch of stuff up here that's gotta be supported. They all look very cool, but I wouldn't necessarily wanna, like if I'm gonna have complicated clothes, I would probably not wanna have too much detail going on in the hands or spread out into other areas. I find it's easiest to print when you know what details are most important to you. You know what? He's gonna be handling something volatile. He probably needs some gloves. So now we can move on to gear. And this is where I come to my second point. This is probably the most important thing to remember if you wanna make heroes that are not gonna be super difficult to support, and that is don't load all the gear slots. It's very tempting to try to get every piece of equipment that character has onto that mini, but I feel like it not only makes it a little more difficult to print, it also spreads out the focus. When you look at your mini, you want to have a good idea of who that character is and what they're all about. Now, if having a whole bunch of crazy gear is something they're about, maybe they're obsessed with magical items or they're a peddler and they're, they're selling all this stuff then it makes total sense. But more often than not, the character has one or two items that really exemplify who they are and what they're about. So I suggest that people focus on those one or two iconic items that really help illustrate the character. Now, I've already violated my first rule because I've got details all over the place. Just all over the place. And also, I've violated pretty much all the rules that are gonna come forward. Let's take a, a look at an example that was a little more rough. My boy Penn here. I, oh, oh, look, oh, wait, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. He left, he left one side open here. He left one side open for me. Between the cat on the base, there's details in every direction. If you load up all the slots, you're just immediately going to break all of the other rules. Now you will get it to print. It's just more difficult to support. All this stuff is made so that it will print. It's pretty difficult to create a mini that simply won't. I would be very curious to see what that monstrosity looks like, but I don't think it can be done. They spend a lot of time to make sure you can't break the thing. But getting back to our hero here. So I did look over a bunch of stuff and I figured what's best is probably just a dagger and he's gonna put an enchantment on it. One of the cool things you can do is spell effects. And right now I'm just placing my items. We'll do like an ice enchantment. I don't know why he would be doing this in his hand if he, you know, it's, I'm not gonna overthink the mechanics of it. Uh, <laughs> But he's applying a spell effect to a, a, a dagger, and that that is what that is. The other thing is, as an artificer, he's he's got to be he's got to have something that he's carrying around gear in, right? So I feel like he should have a backpack. That being said, unless the backpack is really something specific about your character, don't feel like you need to do it just because your character does carry a backpack around. It's just important to display the essence of your character. I feel like he would just unironically wear a fanny pack, not concerned at all about whether or not it was in fashion. And that's about the maximum number of things that I would recommend putting on a character and it's not so much exactly about number as it is about tip number three and i'm actually going to give you number three and four together because they're very closely related and you kind of want to keep them in mind at the same time as you move on to the posing step but i'll throw in a little bonus mini tip at the end so you don't feel cheated number three is build in a consistent direction and i'll explain that in a second but number four is plan for your plate side. And that might be a thing where like, oh, what are you talking about? But this is really something you want to think about when you're doing your posing. What I mean is when you're printing a mini, you're either building on resin from build plate down or you're building with FDM from your build plate up. But in either case, you are building in a certain direction. And if you plan your details to all kind of end up in the same spatial direction on the mini, you're gonna have a lot easier time 
getting everything supported and getting those supports off cleanly because I've got his head kind of facing this way and I like this base pose um, that we're starting with. I'm not gonna adjust it too much. I've got the fanny pack sort of in this same direction as sort of the, the face is looking and where the teeth and nose and glasses and stuff details are kind of gonna go. So I'm generally thinking that this is the sort of direction I'm gonna be building in. So I'll start by taking this arm and bringing it in. Put it in a position where he can be applying that spell effect to this dagger. There we go. So now it looks like he's blasting this dagger with a icy or crystally spell. And yeah, that totally that totally makes sense. Now the advanced posing can seem intimidating because there's a lot of stuff you can move around in a lot of ways, but once you get the basics of it, it's actually pretty easy to get your character looking exactly how you want and the pose you want. And if you want some help getting started, be sure that you're following us here because I am gonna be putting out a video in the next couple weeks that goes into detail with the advanced posing tools. And then we've basically got our build direction planned out here. A structure like this with this crystals is the first thing you're gonna notice when you look at the mini. So I wanna make sure that that looks real good. And to do that, I'm going to basically build this top to bottom. So now I've kind of looked at what direction I'm gonna go in and I have my obvious plate side right here. And this is why I said you kinda wanna think about these two tips at the same time. The building in a consistent direction and the planning your plate side because you want your plate side to be uh, the bottom of that direction you're gonna build in. I know that on these smoother, even surfaces, I can put lots of supports and I will be able to uh, trim them off real cleanly. And this is gonna be where my main foundation is for the printing. Then all these nice little details like the zippers, the crystal, the teeth and the glasses, and most of the hair and ears, those will all look real good because those will be facing away from my plate and get that nice clean exposure with no supports on them. Now I've already done a pretty good job of setting up for my uh, fifth rule, which is avoid layering too many unconnected elements. Uh, I'm talking about stuff like this. Now see what I've got going on here is if I try to build from any direction but the side, I've got layers here because I would have to support from there to there and from there to there and from there to there and from there to there. There, all of these things are creating more difficulty for me to properly support all of the details that are coming off there. The best bad example of this particular tip comes from uh, something I unfortunately did to myself, Rolda. <laughs> I've got her clothes here and then a gap to her tail and then another gap to her cape and then another gap to her wings. This meant that I had to put some tiny little supports inside of each of these layers and it just makes for it to be a little sloppy in. Now, realistically, these are tabletop minis, so is anyone ever gonna get a good look of if there's a little bit of uh, extra material in there because you didn't scrape out the support perfectly? No, but still, why even create these problems for yourself? <sighs> I mean, ultimately she wasn't that hard to print, but definitely could have been easier. And the way I could make that easier is by simply tightening up the poses. Tails are fun because they have 16 points of articulation. And now I'm supposed to take this minute to remind you that this video is sponsored by Hero Forge, who we dearly love. Hero Forge offers fully customizable tabletop minis with dozens of fantasy races and thousands of items to choose from, and they're adding more all the time. I, for one, welcome our new plastic overlords and look forward to the gifts that they plan to bestow upon us. Be sure to check in on Tuesdays especially, known as Treasure Tuesdays, because that's when they often drop new items, but lately there's stuff dropping left and right. Like that upper body scale uh, slider that I found earlier. <laughs> I'm gonna do some weird stuff with that. You can mix and match pretty much every part they have on there, including the different body parts of different races, all the different items. If you wanna keep up with some of the new stuff as it rolls out, both the 2.0 features that we get a beta peek at, as well as the new races and items that are available to everyone, be sure to check out our series Hero Factory, where we design minis for our characters from our games, as well as come up with new characters, all while checking out the new stuff that Hero Forge drops each week. You can see those broadcast live on Twitch, where you'll also find all of our live plays of our tabletop RPG shows, and you can check out replays to get caught up on any of those shows, 
right here on YouTube. Enough plugging, let me get back to my point, which was you can move the tail so that it is in contact with the body back where those layers are, you're gonna save yourself a lot of trouble. I'm also going to adjust the cape, which also has multiple points of articulation. Perfect. So now the hair and the wings will kind of be one big piece. The tail is just emerging from the clothes. I still get the same effect, if not more so, because you can see more of her tail now than you did in the original pose. I can tell you right now that this mini would have printed a lot better than in that original format. But again, we don't have those problems with our good, good boy Darius. Here he is all painted up and pretty. Uh, let's jazz up the base a bit. I like this. He does have a, 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 his iron defender named Chadwick, and we've already established that he can pop out the core to like sacrifice the main machinery and then build a new body for Chadwick. So keeping all my rules in mind, I'm gonna place him. Most of my detail is up here and to this direction, so I very least wanna make sure I Get him over to that side. He's a nice single item. He doesn't load all the slots. I'm building in this consistent direction. I'm gonna place him away from my plate side so that it's not a central thing that needs to be supported down here. And oh, I just need to avoid layers. See here, I don't want space in between here because that's just gonna make things more difficult than it needs to be. So let's bring him back just a touch so he's in contact. And then, yeah. And there we have our hero. Let's see how he prints. So I'll go ahead and pull him into Prusa Slicer and orient him so that that crystal spell effect is pointing straight up just as I planned. And then I will go ahead and auto generate the supports. I'll do a quick check to see if any of those points ended up in a place where they're not actually gonna generate a support and then decide whether I care. Uh, the only one of those I'm really seeing is down here by Chadwick and it's gonna be on the underside of this ball. So I'm not particularly concerned with making sure that detail prints perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And then as you will know, if you saw my last video where I went through my super basic, super simple uh, printing workflow, I'm gonna need to add some extra points right around the bottom curve of the base to make sure that it doesn't end up all droopy or lumpy or anything. It does need to attach to the tip of this ear over here as well as the glasses, but for the most part, my important details are clear, including the zipper on the fanny pack, which I'm hoping to get a, a nice clean definition out of so that with the wash, it'll uh, look real cool. And I think I'm gonna have minimal problems here as far as things I need to adjust in the validator. So let's go ahead and export this, bring it over into the Anycubic Workshop and slice it up. And then I will bring it into the Photon File Validator to check for any lost unsupported islands. Not seeing too many to begin with, and then after the auto fixer, I only have six, fantastically, as expected. These are minimal details that are generally gonna be hidden uh, where I don't really need to worry about that overhang, so I can just uh, delete these parts here or this other spot. I will just go ahead and connect it. In the end, he printed up beautifully and the supports removed quite easily and cleanly and I am incredibly satisfied with this mini. As promised, here's a little bonus tip. Now, as much as I love working with the textures and the different items that you can put on the base of your Hero Forge Mini, it's just simply the case that pretty much any Mini without a base is going to be easier to support and print than one with a base. So, consider going baseless. Especially if you're one of those crafty types that does custom basing with materials other than the printed plastic, you can achieve some really cool results. Maybe we'll do a video about that at some point. Ultimately. Make whatever you want. You will get it to print. Just recognize that some minis are gonna be a little easier to support and print than others. And if you follow my tips, then they should definitely be easy to print and support. If you've got any experience with printing off minis and you've got some things that you notice make one easier to print than another, let us know in the comments. Share that knowledge with the community. We can take those observations into account when we're designing our minis in Hero Forge. But that's all I got for you today. Like it if you like it. And until next time, Gotta come up with a sign off.